Hello Brothers and Sisters Christ, if you didn't watch part one, watch part one. This is part two of the series, Are You Looking? Sound Doctrine, Liberty. Okay, what does it mean by looking? We've already shown how easy, how it's easy to debunk the false liberty out there. It's you, it's what you do, it's what you do or doing. It's you making a choice, choices, plural. Okay, there's one choice you gotta make. Uh, turn to Galatians chapter 2, verse 4. It's where we left off in the last study, the last part. Okay. Galatians 2, verse 4 says, And because of false brethren and unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out your liberty, which is in Christ Jesus. So the liberty that the Bible's talking about, you have to be in Christ Jesus to have it. Okay. That they might bring us into bondage. Okay. I asked you. Before you get to part two, to read the whole book of Galatians. I pray you have, Brother Sister Christ. If you haven't and you just come across this video, stop the video, take some time to read in the King James Bible, God's perfect written word for English speaking people. Look, read about Galatians, because we're going to start, I'm going to start mentioning things, paraphrasing, because there's so much to go through. Okay? Galatians is a great book to go through, okay, when it comes to what true liberty is. And we see that it's in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we're going to get into part two. What is true liberty? Well, it says it's in Christ Jesus. So what we have to do is go back to what does it mean to be in Christ Jesus our Lord? So many times in the Bible we come across in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. Well, what does it mean to be in Christ? Okay. Turn to Romans chapter 8. The infamous, the ones they hate, they hate Romans chapter 8. The Romans road, they say it's the Romans road to hell. Romans, the road to hell. Ignore the book of Romans. Why? Because they're Satanists. They don't want you to truly get saved. And they don't want you to know what you're getting saved from. They're complete Satanists. Anybody who says it's the Romans road to hell, they're Satanists. They're servants of Satan. They try to look godly. You know, the Bible talks about how they, his ministers are transformed into the ministers of righteousness. Whose end shall be according to their works with their whole false system of easy believism and ignoring Romans. Romans road to hell. It's so they can continue in their flesh and their sin. They can have the world. Their works. Right? There's no changed life. They're not in Christ Jesus our Lord. And they're trying to hide that fact. But Romans chapter 8, turn to Romans chapter 8, verse 1. We'll start there. There is therefore now no condemnation. You mean there was condemnation before? Brother says Christ, before we got saved, were we condemned? Oh yeah. What were we condemned to? Hell and then the lake of fire to burn for all eternity. Why? Because of our sins. The wages of sin is death. Right? What's the last victory that Jesus will have victory over um, in the end? When we go out to eternity with the new heaven and the new earth, what's the, the, the last enemy that, that Jesus will overcome? Death. There'll be no more death. But today, there's the law of sin and death. I'm getting ahead of myself. But there is therefore now no condemnation. In other words, there was condemnation. To them which are in Christ Jesus. There we have it. In Christ Jesus. What's this liberty that we're talking about? It has to be in Christ Jesus. What's going on here? There's therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the capital S Spirit. After salvation, the Holy Spirit comes in and you start walking for Jesus Christ. You live for Jesus Christ. You still fail Him sometimes. I fail Him sometimes. But your heartfelt desire is now for Jesus Christ. And because of that, this is what you hide in your heart. The Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. This is now your foundation in all matters of faith and practice. The King James Bible, God's perfect written word in English. Okay? God's word. And you're led by its open, and the Holy Spirit's what opens the scriptures to you to hide in your heart and live it. Okay? There's a change. It's guaranteed. There's no change. I don't know if they're saved. Remember we read uh, uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 4 said, because of false brethren, Paul would look at them and say, hey, I, I don't think it took. There's no change. 
You're still talking like the old man, acting like the old man. You're defending sin, trying to hide sin under this false liberty. You're trying to hide sin. You're just doing everything you can to keep the world. You won't let go of the world. Remember when uh, Jesus was talking to that rich man? He loved the man. He, the man's like, I did all this, I did this, I'm a good man, and everything. And Jesus is like, okay, you're a good man. But one thing thou lackest, sell all that thou hast and give it to the poor, and follow me. When someone gets saved, they give up the world to follow Jesus Christ. Now, we still have to live in this world, I understand that. I'm not saying you just give up everything and just sit there and live like a hermit or something. No, but I'm saying your heartfelt desire is no longer for the world, it's for Jesus Christ. And that man could not give up the things of the world. He, was very, he had worldly sorrow. We're going to get to that difference between godly sorrow and worldly sorrow. He had worldly sorrow. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world. Love not the world. Right? These are things that change when you get saved. You don't walk after the flesh, but after the Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes in and shows you the right way. How to live your life. Evidence of salvation is a changed life. Verse 2, because here it is. For the law of the spirit of life. Stop there for a second. For the law of the spirit of life. I did a study and I got hit by these easy believism. I'm not under any law whatsoever. I am. I'm under the law of spirit of life. How do we know that? Because what does it say after that? What's the law of the spirit of life in, brothers and Christ? It's in Christ Jesus. Hath made me free from the law of sin and death. See, I'm not under the law of sin and death, but I'm under the law of the spirit of life. And what's it in? Christ Jesus. Who's my capital L Lord? Jesus Christ. Who's my capital K King? Jesus Christ. Who's my master? Jesus Christ. Okay. Who's my savior? Jesus Christ. Who tells me what to do? Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit. It's in Christ Jesus that may be free from the law of sin and death. What's the law of sin and death? You sin, you go to hell. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus our Lord. You have to be in Christ Jesus. Verse 3, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. God condemned sin through his flesh. The blood that was shed on the cross is God's blood. God the Father's blood was shed on the cross through Jesus Christ, his body. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. The righteousness of the law might be filled in us. Because we are righteous? No. Because what's the law of the spirit of life in? The law of God, we find out later, the law of God, or it's also referred to as the law of the spirit of life. What's it in? Jesus Christ. So whose righteousness fulfilled that law? Jesus Christ. You need Jesus Christ. Who walked after the flesh, but walked not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Where's your heart at? Where's your thoughts at? Are they becoming fleshly? But the lost world, that's how I was before I got saved, Brother Jesus Christ. I was all flesh-driven. Now, I'm convicted left and right. God has changed my life. I'm not the same man I was before I got saved. You cannot look back and say, hey, you're, you're exactly the same in, in every way. You can't even look back and say, well, you're kind of the same. No, there's a huge change in my life. And if you're truly saved and born again, you have that same testimony, brothers and sisters Christ. There's been a huge change. People look at you. My family doesn't look at me the same way. I've lost all my worldly friends. Okay. People don't, that knew you as a lost man for years don't look at you the same way when you get saved and born again. That new life. Okay, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. This is your priority, not the world. And this false teaching of liberty is all about the world having priority over this. Are you looking for Jesus Christ, or are you getting distracted by the world? Are you looking for His coming, or are you being distracted by the world? Verse 6, for to be carnally minded is death. 
But to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. There we get it. Remember, it's the law of the spirit of life, and it's found in Christ Jesus. It's also referred to as the law of God, for it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. If you're flesh-led and you're just giving in to the flesh, it's sin. We're going to find out this later in, the, in Galatians that talks about what it means to uh, use in a liberty as an occasion to the flesh. Sin. Okay. You can't please God in sin. All sin is negative. Pagan holidays that you can trace back to idols, false gods, sin and wickedness, it's still sin and wickedness. There's nothing you can do. You can't put a Jesus stamp on satanic style music. Uh, Hollywood movies and TV shows, okay, and video games. You can't put a Jesus stamp on things and say, now it's okay. Sin is sin. You can't get away from it, but they try. Boy, this, they, they try so much to try to cover up sin and try to justify it under this false liberty that we just debunked in part one. Why? Because the liberty that the Bible's talking about is only found in Christ Jesus our Lord. Are you, brother, I know, I'm, I'm saying brother says Christ, are you in Christ Jesus our Lord? Then this liberty that we're going to be talking about applies to you. We've been liberated from the law of sin and death. That's what the liberty is. But are ye now in the flesh? I said, no, but, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. If so be the Spirit of God dwell in you. You have to have the Holy Spirit. And evidence of the Holy Spirit is changed life. How you look at things. Like I said, my whole life changed. I don't talk the same way. My priorities have all changed. God comes first. His Word comes first. Brethren come second. Fellowship with the brethren, being there for the brethren comes second. Okay? Your priorities change. My flesh, I put my flesh down all the time. When I was lost, my flesh just ran amok, was going crazy. I got saved, you put your flesh down. Okay? I now, when doors are open, I preach the gospel. I want to see people get saved. And we're going to preach the gospel here in a second. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. That's judgment. Oh, we're not allowed to judge whether someone's saved or not. Yes, that's judgment right there. Paul's saying, if I look and I don't see that changed life, I don't see the Holy Spirit, you're not saved. Okay. Now, don't get me wrong, there's some people that get saved. There's a whole other study we talked about conscience, how you can't kill your conscience but you can beat it down and put it in subjection where it's just a mere whisper and you ignore it. You can't kill it because you still have to answer for everything. As a saved sinner, we answer at the judgment seat of Christ. Lost sinners will answer at the great white throne. Okay. But the church, the body of Christ, we will have to answer at the judgment seat of Christ. And we can't stand up there and say, I didn't know. What you did was, is when you did bad things, as a saved sinner, you beat your conscience down to a point where it's just a whisper. Okay? You can do the same thing to the Holy Spirit, where you just ignore, ignore, ignore the Holy Spirit to the point where you're beating the Holy Spirit down to where you don't listen to it. You don't listen to God. You're going to do things your way. You get back into bad things. That can happen. Absolutely. But the point is, without getting too off on it, is that you can judge someone's salvation. Paul is. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And this easy believism and this false Christianity that's going about says that you don't have to have a changed life. You're not to judge salvation. If someone says they're saved, they're saved. Yeah, but they're, they still look like the world, act like the world, laugh at the world's jokes. They attack truth, Bible truth. They're obviously servants of Satan, but you're not allowed to judge them, according to this false Christianity, these false easy believism and everything. No. The Bible says we can. Right? If they're carnally minded and they're walking after the flesh, you need to err on the side of caution and just preach the gospel to them. So that someday they can be in Christ Jesus our Lord. That they will get saved someday. Right? There's times, a little side note, there's times that I've said, Brother Says Christ, that there's some brother, and I believe is saved, 
But they're getting going back to resurrecting the old man where Paul's saying, don't resurrect the old man. They're getting back to resurrecting the old man that you just err on the side of caution. I go back to preaching the gospel to them. Not because I believe they're lost, but I'm trying to remind them of why they got saved, why they needed to get saved, who it is that saved them, who do they serve. Their priorities are all messed up. Verse 10, And if Christ be in you, you're in Christ, and Christ is in you. Talking about the Holy Spirit. The body is dead because of sin. That's another good verse for the Trinity, uh, uh, to attack the Trinity and promote the Godhead. It just said, talking about if you have not the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Then it says, if Christ be in you, is Jesus the body, the physical body of God in you? No. But the Holy Spirit is. They're, they're, they're one and the same. They're connected. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, you have Jesus Christ in you. And you're in Christ Jesus our Lord. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Our righteousness? Mm -hmm. Jesus' righteousness is imputed to us. Verse 11, But if the Spirit of life that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the Spirit that dwelleth in you. What does it mean to be in Christ Jesus? You have the Holy Spirit in you. You're saved. You're born again. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. You were in debt to the flesh. The wages of sin is death. If you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But we're not to live that way anymore as a saved sinner. For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Bondage again to fear. As we get into this, you're going to realize they're trying to bring the Levitical laws back in. The, they're trying to bring in things that they're adding to the gospel and they're subtracting from the gospel. Okay? They're bringing you back into bondage. You can't, some people are telling you you can't know whether you're saved or not. Okay? You can't know where you're going to go when you die. They get you fearful of thinking you can lose your salvation when you can't because it's not yours. It belongs to God. You belong to God if you're truly saved and born again. All things belong to God, but I'm talking about when it comes to salvation, you belong to God. Okay? The Bible says you were bought with a price. You're not your own. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. And they talk about being brought back into the law and the flesh being in charge. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Okay? What does it mean to be in Christ Jesus? You have the Holy Spirit. You get saved. And you have the Holy Spirit in you. And you're walking after the Spirit, not after the flesh. What's true liberty? We've been liberated from the law of sin and death. And we're under the law of the spirit of life. And what's that spirit of life in? It's in Christ Jesus our Lord. What's that liberty in? In Christ Jesus our Lord. It goes back to Jesus Christ and what he did for us. What he did for us. And liberty, you got that liberty by making one choice. Coming to the cross broken. Throwing your iniquities at the foot of the cross. Believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Confessing both in prayer and asking God to save you. Salvation. You made the choice to come to God in salvation, to get saved. That's the choice you made. And once you get liberty, it's not liberty is not a choice that you present tense are making. Choices and choice. No. You already made, if you're saved and born again, you already made the choice. You humbled yourself at the foot of the cross. Okay? Your liberty that you have now, present tense, has nothing to do with the choices you're making now. Okay. Real quick, we're going to go through uh, true biblical salvation. How do you get saved? How do you get to become in Christ Jesus our Lord? 2 Corinthians 7.10. 2 Corinthians 7.10. We're going to go through these. 2 Corinthians 
chapter 7, verse 10. 2 Corinthians 7, 10, it says, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to repent it of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. How do you get saved? You have to become broken. Remember that rich man that Jesus was talking to. He went, walked away sorrowful. Why? Because the world was more important than true salvation. The world was more important. You've got to come to God broken. What's true biblical repentance? I got into this with some people. True biblical repentance is not admitting that you're a sinner. True biblical repentance is not, ju it's not just admitting you're a sinner. It's not uh, just a change of mind. Okay, God has a change of mind when he repents in the Old Testament. Man has a change of heart. Okay, God looks at the heart. The Bible talks about it time and time again. It's the heart. It's, it's a heart issue. The Bible knows the thoughts. Remember, it's sharper than any double-edged sword and knows God's word and knows the thoughts and intents of the heart. It's a heart issue. It's a change of heart. You come to him broken, having sorrow in your heart towards God. Not the world, towards God, for your personal sins that you've sinned against Him. You come to Him as a sinner, having sorrow for that sin. And the state that you're in, the law of sin and death, you're going to hell to burn for all eternity. I deserve to go to hell. Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy on me. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. That Some people never get to that point. They never get to that broken state where they're just... I'm broken. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm just so sorry for my sinful, wicked state. Lord, have mercy on me. I am a sinner on my way to hell, and I deserve to go to hell. Lord. And the tears, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Remember when, uh, the, some people say it's real, but it's like a parable that Jesus is talking about, where he talks about the uh, Pharisee versus the publican. Pharisees like, well, I'm not like other men are. You know, I might be a sinner, but I'm not like other men are. Yeah, I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. We're all sinners. But I'm not like this man over here, this publican. And he starts going off his works on how great he is. And you go to the publican, and the publican's just, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Beating his breast, his chest. Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. A lot of people don't get to that point. True biblical repentance is having godly sorrow in your heart for your personal sins that you've sinned against Him. Not the sins of the world as a whole. You're a sinner, I'm a sinner. No, your personal sins. Brother says Christ, if you haven't experienced this, by, by, as Paul used to say, check whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Okay? When you have true biblical repentance, the Bible says fruits meet for repentance. You're, it's going to lead to the changed life. You know why a lot of these professing Christians, they're called false brethren. Bob, Paul calls them false brethren. There's no changed life. Why is there no changed life? They never truly repented. They got, they got led in the false belief that repentance is just going from unbelief to belief. Repentance is just a change of mind. It's just you admitting you're a sinner. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. We're all sinners. They never come to that heartfelt brokenness before the cross. Throwing their iniquities at the foot of the cross. When I say throw your iniquities at the foot of the cross, iniquities are sins. I ain't saying cleaning up your life and then get saved. It's saying, I'm a sinner. My personal sins. I'm a sinner. That's what's getting thrown at the cross. Not the sins of the world. Your personal sins. Okay. First Corinthians fifteen three. We get what Jesus Christ did for us. So you have to repent. First thing you do is repent. Come to him broken. Then you can believe in Jesus Christ on the cross. And what he did for you. First Corinthians fifteen three. First Corinthians 15, verse 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I received, how that, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The Bible says He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him, and with His stripes we are healed. 
Right? You read the whole story. He had his beard ripped out. He was spit upon. He was beaten within an inch of his life. He was whipped. He bled out on the cross. He died because he bled out on the cross. He was nailed to a cross. He was crucified. This is what Jesus Christ went through. Right? To pay a price that you're supposed to pay. And if you reject Jesus Christ, you're going to pay it someday. You're going to be, I'm sorry, not someday, for all eternity. Like we just talked about. Uh, hell and the lake of fire. You're going to be paying for your sins for all eternity. But there's a man that paid a price to pay for sins. You want your sins forgiven? you got to go to the cross. you got to go to Jesus Christ. Repent and believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the rock. Finished work. When Jesus said, it is finished, it is finished. Before you get into this, you don't add to it, you don't subtract from it. Okay. Romans 10.9. Turn to Romans 10.9. Romans 10.9. Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. It was God's blood that was shed on, on Calvary. Because only God's blood can wash your sins away. Only God is perfect. And Jesus was perfect. Okay. Romans 10.9. Uh, the pesky Romans, like I said, you hear people say the Romans rode to hell. Those are people that are Satanists, servants of Satan. Romans is written to saved sinners at Rome, to the body of Christ at Rome. Okay, this applies to us today. Don't let anybody lie to you and deceive you. And here's the thing, in the end, you really weren't deceived. You chose the wrong way because it sounded better, is what it's going to come down to. Uh, choose the right way, whether it sounds good to you or not. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You repent, you believe, you confess both in prayer. Lord, I am a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner on my way to hell, Lord, and I deserve to go to hell for sinning against you. I don't want to go to hell, but I deserve to go there, Lord. I am so sorry. I believe in Jesus Christ, that He is your Son, God manifest in the flesh. I believe that He died on the cross and bled, and His blood can wash my sins away. You confess both of those in prayer, brothers of Christ. Now they're trying to take prayer out of salvation. Like I said, they're subtracting from it and they're adding to it. Okay. Romans 10, 13, you jump down to Romans 10, 13, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You have to get to a point where you repent, you believe, you're confessing both of those in prayer, and you say, Lord, save me. Please, Lord, save me. I don't deserve to be saved. Lord, please save me. A lot of people don't get to that point. They just say, well, I believe, I have head belief. They take repentance out of salvation. They take prayer out of salvation. It's just head belief. You don't have come to, they don't want you to get saved, truly saved and born again. Those people, they don't want people to get saved. They're servants of Satan. Those are people that are carnally minded. We read up there in Romans 8. They're carnally minded and walking after the flesh. They don't want to give that up. So they just, oh, just head belief, just head belief. I just believe and you're saved. Faith alone, faith alone, faith alone. But you won't find that in Scripture at all. It never says faith alone. I think it's in Hebrews it says, Faith without works is being dead alone. In other words, true conversion, there's good works that follow that line up with the Scriptures. Not just because I say they're good works. They line up with the Scriptures. But there's a changed life that follows true conversion. That proves that you truly believe. That you truly have faith. Okay, the changed life. Okay, now mainly Hebrews is for the time of Jacob's trouble. You take the mark, you worship the beast, you go to hell. All the faith in the world isn't going to save you once you've done that. Okay, we don't. You don't have eternal security in the time of Jacob's trouble, but in the, what we call the church age, from the death of Jesus Christ to the catching away of the body of Christ, we are sealed into the day of redemption. We are sealed. Okay. But faith alone is not in the scriptures. You need to come to God broken. You need to repent. And it takes faith to repent. It takes faith to believe. It takes faith to pray. 
you know, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. It all that takes faith. You can't see God. You can't actually see Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection like some people did back then. Like Paul, Paul saw Jesus Christ uh, in the sky. Uh, Peter saw Jesus, the risen Jesus Christ and talked with him. John did. Luke. Okay. It takes faith. That's why uh, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, they don't like to read 10 because 10 talks about the changed life. That says that we are saved by God's grace through faith. It takes faith to do all these things. Okay. And you get to 2 Corinthians 5.17. You don't have to turn there, but 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ. We just read about what it means to be in Christ in Romans 8. You're spiritually minded walking after the Spirit. That's what it means to be in Christ. The liberty that you have that's in Christ has to do with the changed life, saved sinner. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. The changed life after salvation. You are now capitalized spiritually minded and walking after the Spirit. Now, with that liberty, I'm going to get ahead of myself a little bit, but that liberty is this. Can you still sin? Because there's also a false movement out there, brothers of Christ, that's pushing that you're sinless, per sinlessly perfect. After you get saved, you're sinlessly perfect. No, you're not sinlessly perfect. After you get saved and you're in Christ Jesus, what you have is liberty. What that means is now as a saved sinner, not sinlessly perfect, saved sinner, when I sin as a saved man, I'm not earning wages of death. I might be losing uh, uh, rewards in heaven. I might be making a mess of my life down here. But I'm not earning wages when it comes to the wages of sin is death. I'm not earning death. I now have the gift of God, which is eternal life, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so do you if you're truly saved and born again. But when you're lost, you're earning the wages of sin and death. The lost world is earning hell fire and damnation, those who get saved, we're supposed to be earning rewards in heaven. Our eyes are supposed to be on Jesus Christ, not the world. Our priorities is, is the Holy Spirit tells us this is your priority, not the world. Some brethren, this whole liberty, false liberty is about met, is having the world as their priority. Their flesh gets to be have priority again. Their flesh gets to be in charge. Right? True biblical salvation, that's what it is. That's how you become in Christ Jesus. Now turn back to Galatians 1.1. 1, 1. Okay. Let's, go to, let's see what's actually going on here. The, the liberty, when it says you spy out your liberty, when we got to Galatians chapter 2, it says, And that, because of false brethren unawares brought in, came in privily to spy out your liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. What's the bondage? Galatians 1.1, 1, 1. Okay. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and Paul was proven to be an apostle, he was the twelfth apostle, okay. chosen by God, Jesus Christ. Verse 2, and all the brethren which are with me unto the church of Galatia. Now, a lot of people get so stuck, be careful, get so stuck on this. It's just to the Gentiles. It's just to the Gentiles. No, he's saying to the church of Galatia, there's neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. He's writing to the church in a certain area. Here it's Galatia. Okay, There's Jews present. There's saved Jews. There's saved Gentiles. There's false brethren on both sides. Okay? Because we, we read about this, false brethren that get brought in. Verse 3, Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. God the Father. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Verse 6, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from... Him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So what's the bondage? Here's the true gospel. We just talked about it. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. Call means ask. Ask God to save you. 
those whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. In the Old Testament, it said men start. Then men start began to call upon the name of the Lord, saying, "Lord, help us. Lord, save us." Right. The grace of Christ into another gospel. Someone's coming along and they're messing up the gospel that they got saved off of, getting them to doubt whether they're saved or not. The way God, that Paul said that God said to get saved through Paul. Not say. I'm sorry. I said it where it sounds like I'm saying Paul's would say. Paul said the gospel has been revealed unto me. My gospel. Okay, God revealed how to get saved through Paul. And these people got saved that way. So when you're reading that about uh, Spy Hour Liberty, it's talking about people who got saved and now they're getting messed up. It's not talking about people who initially got saved a false way. They're part of uh, false religions. It's talking about those who got saved the right way first. And then someone comes along and tells you, you know what? That... Pesky repentance, it just means unbelief to belief. And you don't have to say believe and believe. So you can throw that out. And you got brethren that got saved, repenting, and believing in, in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And now they only preach belief. And they took repentance out. What happened? I marvel that you are so soon removed from those that call you the grace of God unto another gospel. Oh, you know, prayer's a work and we don't do prayer. You know what? You've got to, you know, we got to bring some laws into it. You got to, you know, wear your Sunday best. You got to go to Bible buildings. You've got to keep uh, holy days, Sabbath days, and new moon. You got to be circumcised. Uh, you got to keep the Eucharist, the pagan Catholic Eucharist. You got to do the works. And if you don't do this, you're not saved. Works get brought in. All right. And like I said, they try to deceive you into thinking re re repentance is a work. It's not. They try to deceive you into thinking prayer is a work. It's not. Right? The Bible has definitions of what works are. Prayer is not one of them. Okay, repentance is not one of them. But what, look what he says in verse 7, which is not another. In other words, there is no other gospel. Because he has to correct himself. He's, he's not correcting himself. He's trying to make it clear. You guys think it's another gospel, but there is no other gospel. Okay? You know there's only one gospel. There's two ways into heaven, but only one way that's possible for mankind is through the gospel. If you want to try to go through the law of sin and death and be perfect like Jesus was and try to get into heaven that way, by all means, you go for it. You're going to fail. You've already failed. Everyone has. But you can only get to, get to heaven through the law of sin and death or the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's the only two ways to get through, get to, get to heaven. I chose the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. I pray you did too that's watching this. And brethren, we did. Paul's saying, but it's not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, that, that, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. How do we know that the, the, the church isn't in the time of Jacob's trouble? Because there's an angel that comes along and, it preach, and he preaches another gospel gospel. That's how we know the church is not going through the time of Jacob's trouble. But today in the church age, from the death of Jesus Christ to the catching away before the time of Jacob's trouble, if anybody, remember what Satan does, he likes to transform himself into an angel of light. And no marvel that his ministers also try to transform themselves into the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. He likes to transform himself into an angel of light. And he goes about preaching another gospel. Let him be accursed. As we said before, so I say now again, if any man, any man, preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. You know what that accursed is? They're going to hell to burn for all eternity. If he refuses to accept the gospel that Paul preached, repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you, if he rejects that, he's going to hell. If he rejects it for another gospel, which is not another, they're going to go to hell. Verse 10, For do not I persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? You know a lot of the watered-down gospel where it gets really watered down in these Babel buildings is so they can please men. They can get those seats filled. They can get that money coming in. Because easy believism is popular today. 
I don't have to repent. I don't have to have a changed life after salvation. I can continue in my sins and live however I want. I'm the one in charge, carnally minded, Romans 8, carnally minded, walking after the flesh. I can continue that way and just say I believe in the big guy upstairs. I can get to go to heaven. It's popular. Because it pleases the flesh and it pleases the world. Paul's like, do I persuade men or God? Do I seek yet to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Here's the truth. Take it or leave it. You reject repentance, you're going to go to hell, and you're going to burn for all eternity. As it applies to salvation. You refuse to pray, confess both in prayer, you refuse to ask God to save you, you're going to go to hell, and you're going to burn for all eternity. But that's not popular. That doesn't please people. I should not be the servant of Christ. Verse 11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Once again, in order to have liberty, you have to be saved and born again. This passage, he's not addressing people that are lost, that got saved a wrong way. He's addressing people that got saved the right way, and someone's coming in to spy out their liberty and get them to change the gospel they got saved off of. Get them to doubt their salvation. Get them to doubt Jesus Christ. When he said it is finished, eh, it's not quite finished. You still, you still have to do this. You still have to do that. It's not quite fit. You know what I'm saying? That's what's going on here. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, if you want to turn there. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Brothers and sisters, there's not... 50 Gospels out there. There's one Gospel that, that presents Jesus Christ to get you to be in Christ Jesus our Lord, and then there's everything else that makes you of the flesh, carnally minded, walking after the flesh, and you're of your father the devil. You're in Satan, if you want to say it that way. You're of your father the devil. Why? Because the lust of your father you will do. It's all about the flesh. So you can continue in the flesh, living after the flesh. Chase version to Christ, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent, talk about Satan, beguiled Eve through his subtlety, your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if, we, for if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which we have not received, remember Romans 8 says, if, if you be that you have the capital S spirit of, of God in you, some people have that antichrist spirit in them that, that John talks about and the and 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, the, the spirit of Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, they might well bear with him. What's the well bear with him? The serpent, Satan. Where's Satan going? Satan's going to be tossed in the lake of fire, and he's going to spend eternity in the lake of fire. If you don't follow the true gospel, that's where you're going to end up. If you start getting pulled, talked into these false gospels, another gospel, you're going to end up in, a, in hell for all eternity. Brethren that are truly saved, you can't lose your salvation, but you can get really messed up. And that's what's going on here in Galatians. Someone's coming in to mess up the brethren. And we're going to see who those group of people that's coming in is messing them up. Go back to Galatians chapter 2, verse 1. Then 14 years after I went up again, to Jerusalem and with Barnabas, and took Titus with me also, and went up by revelation and communication unto them, and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Here it is. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Somebody was coming in telling them they had to be circumcised and keep the laws of Moses. I wonder who that is. Oh, no, it's just culture. It's just culture. No, it's the Jews. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out your, our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place 
by subjection, know not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. When someone adds or subtracts to how you get saved, you don't give them the time of day. You should preach the gospel to them and I'm done. This is the true gospel. You're wrong. Get saved and you're done with them. You're done. Now, if someone comes along and says, hey, I'm going to treat you like a saved sinner. The Bible says what you're doing there is wrong. You need to repent and get that out of your life. Repentance starts before salvation and continues your whole life as a Christian, as a Bible-believing, God-fearing man. Okay? It's there your whole life. If someone says, hey, I'm going to treat you like you're saved, because I do that. A lot of people who profess to be saved, I try to correct them on things in the Bible when it comes to false beliefs outside the gospel. Um, sin, when it comes to sin and wickedness. I'll try to treat them like a brother or sister in Christ, and I'll, I'll correct them. All scriptures given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. For reproof, for correction. You can reprove someone, you can correct somebody. A brother in Christ. And when they start going crazy, how dare you judge me? There's nothing wrong with my sin. Then I have to go back to the gospel. Just go back to the very beginning. Okay. But what we see here going on is someone's coming in trying to say you have to be circumcised. Well, yeah, yeah, believe it. Yeah, repenting and believing and confessing both in prayer and asking God to say, that's good, and I'm glad you did that. That's good. But you know, you're not really truly, truly saved unless you get circumcised. You're not really truly saved unless you keep the holy days, Sabbath days, and new moon. The touch not, taste not, eat not. You can't truly be saved unless you truly know your, your Savior's name in, in Hebrew. Got into that recently with some, pe some people. They make it out like you can't truly be saved and truly know your, your Savior, Jesus Christ, unless you know his name in Hebrew. Okay? Uh, that's a lie. What are they doing? They're coming out to spy out your liberty, which you have in Christ Jesus. They're trying to bring you back under the law. They're trying to bring you back under Hebrew, back under the Levitical laws, in order to be saved. Okay. Acts 16.1. Turn to Acts 16.1. Remember, you can always pause the video and then turn and then unpause the video. Acts 16.1. Then came he to Derbe and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish and believed, but his father was a Greek which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him, and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. And people say, well, he circumcised Timothy. Remember what Paul said, I'm probably getting ahead of myself, but Paul said that I have become all things to all men that I may win Christ. He's not talking about sin. He's not talking about being fleshly. You know, because the lost world today, you have to look like the world to win the world, act like the world to win the world. That's all satanic garbage. You're supposed to be a light unto the world. You're supposed to be set apart from the world. What Paul's talking about is the difference between going to the Jews versus the Gentiles. When he went to the Jews, he had Timothy circumcised because they were going to go preach the gospel to the Jews. And the Jews will not fellowship with anybody that's not circumcised and keeping the law of Moses. So Paul would do that with Timothy so they could reach the Jews. Now when they went to preach to the Gentiles, it wasn't about what we just read there. T uh, Titus didn't get circumcised. He didn't compel to get circumcised because they were going to the Gentiles to preach the gospel. There was no need. It has nothing to do with salvation. It has to do with preaching the gospel that we see going on here. That's why Timotheus was circumcised because they were going to go preach the gospel to the Jews. And as they went... Through the cities they delivered them the decrees for to keep, and that, the, that were ordained of the Gospels and elders which were of Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Okay. And my notes, Timothy was not circumcised to get saved. He was circumcised so that the Jews would accept him enough to the point to listen to the Gospel that they were preaching. That Timothy would preach alongside Paul. That's why he got circumcised. had nothing to do with salvation. He didn't get circumcised in order to be saved. You go back to Galatians, Timothy, or Titus. Titus didn't uh, get circumcised. It wasn't felt compelled to, so he didn't. 
You don't have to be circumcised in order to be saved. And when people start bringing you back into bondage where you have to start keeping the Levitical laws in order to be saved, what are they doing? They're coming out to spy out your liberty, which is in Christ Jesus. That's then. What's going on today? You have Catholicism. You have the Babel buildings. I do have some people believe I'm not saved because I don't go to a Babel building. I don't wear a nice suit and tie. Well, now they don't wear the nice suit and ties anymore. Now you can just go to these Babel buildings. Because like I said, these Babel buildings are all about pleasing the world. It used to be you had to dress nice one day a week and go to these Babel buildings. But now you can dress any way you want. Um, but the whole point is, is you don't go to a Babel building, then you're not saved. The Catholic Church, if you're not Catholic, and in other words, if you're not keeping the Eucharist, you're not saved. Okay. You have to go through them, and you have to do works in order to be saved. And, the, and with Catholicism, you can't know that you're saved. It's called the sin of presumption. You can't know that you're saved. You just have to hope you are. I don't know. You've got to die in a state of grace. What are they doing? They're coming in to spy out your liberty, which you have in Christ Jesus, talking to saved sinners, getting messed up by all this. Galatians chapter 5. Go back to Galatians chapter 5. So we see there, Timothy was circumcised, not because of salvation, because of who he was preaching the gospel to. And like I said, you look in the Bible, Jews are not allowed to fellowship with people that aren't circumcised. You can do business, trade, buy, sell, except with the Samaritans. They had no dealings with the Samaritans, period. But Gentiles, they can do business with Gentiles, but they can't fellowship. When it comes to matters of God, they're not going to listen to a Gentile that's uncircumcised. That's why he was circumcised. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What's that liberty? Jesus Christ freed us from the law of sin and death. You can't go through the Levitical laws and get yourself freed from the law of sin and death. You can't do it on your own. Jesus Christ is the one that liberated us from it. You cannot earn heaven. You cannot, you cannot weasel your way out of hell without Jesus Christ. It's not about what you are doing. It's about what Jesus Christ did for us. Okay. Verse 2, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. If you have to get circumcised to be saved, then what's the point in believing in Jesus Christ? That's the whole point. There is no point. That's why Paul says another gospel, but it's not another. Well, when they come to you with that, you know, they always pat you on the back. Oh, yeah, what you did there was good. Yeah, what you did there was good. Repentance and belief and everything. But you also have to be circumcised. Then what was the point of, of, of repenting and believing? If all I had to do is get circumcised to be saved. You know why people like works in order to be saved when it comes to salvation? Because they can choose what works they want to keep and what works they don't. They can choose what they want to give up and what they don't want to give up. They're the final authority, not Jesus Christ and not his per God's perfect word, the King James Bible. Verse 3, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. See, Paul really throws it back in their face. Okay, you, you got circumcised? You're trying to keep the whole law to be saved? You're trying to turn your back on what Jesus Christ did and you're going to go back to the law? Okay, you got circumcised? What about the touch not, taste not, eat none? What about the holy days, Sabbath days, and new moon? What about this? What about, you're a debtor to the whole law. Nobody's able to keep the whole law, and that's the deception. They'll put on this front like the Pharisee versus the publican. They'll put on this front, look at me, look at me, I'm keeping this and I'm keeping that. But where they're failing the Lord, they keep that quiet. They keep that locked up and hidden in the closet. I don't want them to see that part. You're a debtor to the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever you are justified by the law. If you are held to one part of the law, you are held to the whole law, is what Paul is saying here. The deception is if I can keep part of the laws or keep the laws that I want, then that's all that matters. No, if you're going to try to get back under the law in order to be saved, like trying to bring in head coverings instead of following the scriptures as they are, and you're trying to get into back works to be saved, then you're held accountable to the entire law. You've broken so much as one of them, you're lost, you're going to hell. I am in Jesus Christ. I have liberty. 
If I fail and fall, God picks me back up. I'm sealed into the day of redemption. Okay, we did a great study on uh, the unpardonable sin for today. There is no unpardonable sin for today. When God saves you, you are saved. Nothing you can do can cause you to lose your salvation. Why? Because you have liberty, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And when we get into part three, we're going to explain how people are abusing that liberty. But to this part two is about what's that liberty in? It's in Christ Jesus. What does it mean to be in Christ Jesus? True salvation, biblical salvation. Did you get saved the Bible way? Then you're saved. Don't let anybody come around and tell you, you got to do this, you got to do that, and start adding works in order to get saved. Or add works that if you don't do those works, you're lost. You lose your salvation. Okay? There's the changed life after salvation, absolutely. Okay? But that's evidence of salvation. You're not doing good works because to get saved. You got saved through Jesus Christ. He did the work. The changed life is evidence of salvation. You do good works because you are saved, because you have your love for Jesus Christ, and your Holy, the Holy Spirit comes in, and you're spiritually minded, walking after the Spirit. That's why. Right? If you are fallen, back to Galatians 5, 4, if you are fallen from grace, verse 5, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Remember, we're only two-thirds redeemed. Our soul is redeemed, our spirit's redeemed, but this body of flesh is still struggling with the law of sin. The word death gets dropped. We're not under the law of sin and death, but the Bible talks about how we're still under the law of sin. As a saved sinner, this body of flesh is still going to tempt us. That's why the Bible says there's no temptation taking you that such is common to man, but God will, with the temptation, provide a way to escape. This body of flesh is still sinful and wicked. Okay, Paul says that with my mind I might serve the law of God. The soul and the spirit are serving the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. This body of flesh is still under the law of sin. Okay. We're only two-thirds redeemed, and we're waiting, we're looking for that blessed hope. The catching away of the body of Christ, where we're going to get our good bodies that are incorruptible. Okay. Bodies that won't tempt us anymore, that are sinless. Verse 6, for in Christ Jesus, in Christ, to be in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith, faith, if I can turn the page, but faith which worketh by love, for God so loved, past tense, it was the love that God showed us at the cross. You want God's love? You go to Calvary by love. Verse 7, you did run well, you got saved the right way, you did run well, but who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Now you're falling back into works in order to be saved. The Levitical laws, circumcision, the laws of Moses. In the book of Acts, they, had the, they went all through that with the Gentiles. Should the Gentiles be circumcised and keep the laws of Moses? No, because then the, Jesus Christ, what he did, becomes of none effect. The Jews, Paul, even... Uh, Peter said, we weren't able to keep the law. How are we supposed to expect them to keep the law when we weren't even able to keep the law? Because if we were able to keep the law, Jesus wouldn't have had to die on the cross. Jesus died on the cross because we couldn't keep the law. Like I said, the two ways to heaven is keeping the law or going through Jesus Christ. No man can keep the law. Only Jesus Christ kept the law. We have to go through Jesus Christ. It's the only way to get to heaven today. You cannot keep the law. There's some people who try, but they're going to fail. You can't keep the law. Verse 8. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. It's not of God. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. When they start bringing in the littlest things, saying, well, no, it's not that big a deal, but you should be doing this to be a good a Bible, uh, you know, to be saved. Just the littlest things. Well, we're not bringing in the whole law. We're just bringing circumcision in. Just, just circumcision. That's it. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. When they bring in one thing and get their hooks in you, they're going to bring in another thing. Now you've got to keep the holy days, Sabbath days, and new moon, which is, like I said, I believe it's being talked about in Romans 14. 
Now you got uh, uh, Colossians 2, the touch not, taste not, eat not. Okay. Now you got to have the Babel buildings. Okay, you got to do the synagogues. You got to have a temple that isn't the body. The body's no longer the temple. It's a temple built with man's hands. You see how a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? It gets worse and worse and worse and worse. You got to do these things in order to be to get saved. You have to do these things in order to keep from losing your salvation. Verse 10, I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. There's an, I believe there's an extra uh, punishment for those who die, pre, uh, die in their sins and pre, that preach false gospels. You can get saved, you can repent, get saved the Bible way, and God will forgive you. But I'm talking about you die in your sins. Those men out there that are supposed to be godly men that are preaching false gospels right, shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. Right? Some people say, well, that's just talking about hell, period. Yeah, that's the ultimate punishment, the lake of fire, hell and then the lake of fire. Right? Verse 11, And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? He's saying, I don't preach it. Look how the Jews are treating me. I preach the true plan of salvation. Look how the world treats you, brother, says Christ. When you preach the true plan of salvation, look how these professing, easy believism people treat you. Oh, yeah. Why do I suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. Remember the preaching of the gospel? To the Jews, it's a stumbling block, um, a rock of offense. And the, to the Gentiles, um, gosh, I'm trying to remember that passage. Forgive me. Um, foolishness. To the Jews it's a stumbling block. To the Gentiles it's foolishness. They don't want the true plan of salvation. So when you have this false gospel, easy believism, that's accepted by the world as a whole, the world loves it, all these false religions are coming together based off of it, and the Trinity, the pagan Trinity, uh, then you know something's not right. Paul's being persecuted. He's preaching the true plan of salvation, repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer, ask God to save you, and after God saves you, you are now in Christ, you're walking after the Spirit, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus, you're bought with the price, you're not your own, prove your own selves, check whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves, actions, the life that you're living, are we to sin that grace may abound, God forbid, how we that are dead to sin live any longer live any longer therein. They don't like that. It's not popular today. Verse 12, I would they they were even cut off which trouble you. Now some people can take that to the extreme and say, hey, that means he's saying, I wish you were, they were dead. I wish God would kill them and send them to hell to get them out of the way because they're A, leading people to hell, and B, they're messing up the brethren that are saved. But cut off more than anything is just get them away from you. I wish they had nothing to do with you because they're messing you up. The liberty, when someone's coming out to spy out your liberty, which you have in Christ Jesus, it has to do with you got saved the Bible way, and they come in and say, that wasn't the right way. Did you repent? That's wrong. Did you pray? That's wrong. Did you, not, did you get circumcised? Well, then you're still not truly saved. Did you, you know... Do you keep the holy days, Sabbath days, and new moon? Well, then you're not saved either. Roman, Romans chapter 14. Okay. Uh, Acts chapter 15, verse 5. Acts chapter 15. I did put this in my notes real quick. Acts chapter 15, verse 5. Go ahead and read it. You can pause the video and read it from uh, Acts, Acts chapter 15, 5, all the way down to 29. Okay. And this is what I was talking about. I put it in my notes. That... Uh, but there arose up a certain sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the laws of Moses. Talk about the Gentiles that got saved. They got saved and born again the proper way, the gospel, the true plan of salvation. And you had Pharisees coming in saying, Jews, Jews coming in saying they need to get circumcised and keep the laws of Moses. And read how they go through there. Paul, or Peter, I'm sorry, Peter stands up and says, hey, we weren't able to keep it. And you read in Galatians, we get back to Galatians, you read in Galatians, 
It's talking about uh, how Paul had to stand up to Peter and said, Hey, when the Jews are present, he withdraws himself from the Gentiles and treats them like they're lost because they're not circumcised and they're not keeping the laws of Moses. So he withdraws himself from the Gentiles and treats them like they're lost and hangs out with the Jews. And when the Jews leave, he goes and hangs out with the Gentiles and treats them like they're saved. But he's getting torn between those two worlds, the Old Testament and the New Testament. He's supposed to be on the New Testament. They don't have to be circumcised. You can still all fellowship. Jews and Gentiles that are saved can fellowship together whether you're circumcised or not. Titus wasn't. Uh, Timothy was. Okay, there might be a certain situation where you want to get circumcised to help preach the gospel. But you read through there, there's Peter saying it's not required. We weren't able to keep the law. Why would we put that yoke of bondage on them? And then Peter started backpedaling, and Paul had to get on to him. Galatians 3.1. Galatians 3.1. Get back to Galatians. Galatians 3.1. O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, the true gospel? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit, capital S Spirit, by the works of the law? No. In other words, by the law of sin and death? No. Or by the hearing of faith, the law of the Spirit of life, which is what? In Christ Jesus. You get the Holy Spirit by the law of the Spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. You get it by going through the true plan of salvation. The true plan of salvation. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer, and ask God to save you. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? I was made perfect by God. Uh, Jesus Christ's righteousness was imputed to me. His blood washed my sins away. Jesus made me perfect through His blood, through His righteousness. Remember, it's not my righteousness. My righteousness is filthy. I have no righteousness of my own. But now they're trying to act like they've got Jesus' righteousness, and now they have their own righteousness. Beware of this false teaching out there of sinless perfection after salvation. It's false. It's a lie. Right? Are you made perfect by the flesh? Now pause the video, Brothers Jesus Christ, again, and read the, if you want to, and read the whole chapter of Galatians 1. Okay, read the whole thing. Okay. But jump down to Galatians chapter 3, verse 22, where it says, But the Scripture hath concluded all under sin. It's talking about them trying to get, get back under the law to be perfect. I'm perfect because of the law. I'm not perfect because of Jesus Christ. Well, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but you say my, my righteousness is not based off Jesus Christ. My righteousness is based off the law. That's what there's, what's, what's going on there. Brother, this is Christ. Is your righteousness based off the law? Or is it based off of G what Jesus Christ did for you? Is it based off Jesus Christ? It's based off Jesus Christ. But you got people coming in trying to get you away from that, saying, eh, that's not enough. You also got to do this. You also got to do that. So when Jesus said, it is finished, when he died on the cross and said, it is finished, that wasn't true. They're calling him a liar. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin. You know, the laws of God are a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. They're to let us know that we're under the law of sin and death, and we can't keep the law. We need a Savior. We need to be saved. We can't save ourselves. The schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under a law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all of the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. True salvation is through Jesus Christ. We get liberty from Jesus Christ and what he did. Liberty is not a choice that we make today, like a continuing choice where we get to choose and choose. And if we want to, if you want to get circumcised, fine. If you don't want to get circumcised, fine. Can we, uh, can we choose whether to get circumcised or not circumcised? We saw two situations, Titus and Timothy. Yes, 
But is that liberty? No. When does it become liberty? A liberty issue. It becomes a liberty issue when they say that if you're not circumcised, Titus, they're saying Titus isn't saved, but Timothy is. Why? Because he's circumcised. Then it becomes a liberty issue. When salvation comes into play, it becomes a liberty issue. Okay? If you want to get circumcised, go for it. You don't want to get circumcised? Okay. Has nothing to do with liberty until someone comes in and says, You're not saved, Philip, because you didn't get circumcised. Or they come in and say, Philip, I believe you're saved, and the only reason I believe that is because you're circumcised. Has nothing to do with the cross, has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. It's all about circumcision. That's when it becomes liberty issue. And only then. Be careful. Oh, you're getting onto my satanic and sinful video games. You're just trying to spy out my liberty. That has nothing to do with liberty. It's a sin issue, not a liberty issue. It's a sin issue. Christmas is a sin issue. The holidays are a sin issue. Okay? Um, movies, TV shows, video games. Okay, drunkenness, okay, whatever, fornication, the flesh, those are sin issues. They're not liberty issues, they're sin issues. They become a liberty issue if you're told you have to do something in order to be saved, apart from the gospel, the plan of salvation. Then it becomes a liberty issue when salvation comes in. Please understand that, brother and sister Christ. Please, please, okay. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Okay? It's faith in Jesus Christ. I'm just trying to really bring this home. Uh, Galatians 2, 7. Galatians chapter 2, verse 7. Let's go back to Galatians chapter 2, verse 7. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was to Peter, Peter was dealing a lot more with Jews than Gentiles. I think that's how he got caught up in that. Okay? We're going to go back to it. That's how he got caught up in it. With the Jews, he's circumcised. He's dealing with Jews that are still having a hard time letting go of the law and giving their life completely to Jesus Christ. Okay? Because the Jew today that gets saved, they get exiled and acted like they're, they get treated by their, their families if they're dead. They don't exist. Okay? I have lost family members that still acknowledge me. Hey, how are you doing? Like my mom and uh, my dad, uh, my brothers... Okay, I have family members that still say, hey, how are you doing? But when a Jew gets saved, their family treats them like they're dead, like they don't even exist. Okay. It's, all, it's, it's almost like being disowned. Okay. But Paul is saying that Peter went to the, Gen, uh, to the Jews predominantly. He still preached to Gentiles too, because we will see this. But he preached to the Jews predominantly. And Paul predominantly, he preached to Jews, but he predominantly was preaching to the Gentiles. That's what his ministry was uh, predominantly accepted and um, preached, was to the Gentiles. Verse 8, For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same also my, was mightily in me towards the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me Barnabas, the right hand of fellowship. Fellowship. I have that underlined in here because I keep pointing out the Jews, by the law, according to the law, they're not allowed to fellowship with anybody that's not circumcised. But now we're not under the law. It was a hard, like I said, the gospel is a stumbling block for the Jews. It's hard for them to get past that and say, okay, they don't have to be circumcised in order to fellowship with them. It's hard for them. That we should go up into, to the heathen and they into the circumcision. Only they would, that we should remember the poor, the same which also I was forward to do. I also marked that in my notes to remind the brethren. Remember the poor. And how often do you give out, when you give out gospel tracts, you give out some food with some gospel tracts. You see someone that, that's a home, a homeless or something, give him a, a good jacket. You see his jacket's falling apart. Give him a good jacket. Take him, like, you can take him to Goodwill, or, I'm not really for supporting Goodwill, but take him somewhere where you can afford to give him a good jacket, a second-hand store or something. Uh, you know, that, giving a gospel track is important. I always say that. Giving him a jacket, you're wasting your time just giving him a jacket. You're wasting your time by giving him just food if you don't give him the gospel. I give the gospel track out to a lot of the homeless around here, and I try to give them food. I try to give them um, uh, clothes. 
I try to do those over just giving them money, but sometimes I'll give them a little bit of money, like a couple dollars or something, but I'd rather take them and get them the food because uh, there's no telling what they're going to spend the money on. But if you don't, but the important part is the gospel. If you're not preaching the gospel to them, you're not really doing anything for them. But we do need to remember the poor, especially those of, our, of, of the body of Christ. We need to remember the poor. We need to be helping one another out. But back to the subject at hand, but verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Remember, I just talked about this. What's going on here? Peter is treating the Gentiles like they're lost when the Jews are around. He won't fellowship with them. Remember what the Bible says? We're not to have fellowship with darkness. We're not to have uh, fellowship with the lost world. All right? So if you refuse to have fellowship with someone, you're saying they're lost. Verse 12, for, the, for before that certain came from James, I'm sorry, I need to correct myself. You're saying that they're lost or you're saying that they're in sin because there's times where you have to put people, save people out of your fellowship and you have to treat them like they're lost. You don't believe that they're lost, but you treat them that way because you put them out so God can judge them. They can get their heart right with the Lord so they can come back into the fellowship. But what Peter's doing is he's treating them like they're lost. They haven't done anything wrong. They, they're not, I mean, we're all sinners, but they haven't done anything that, deserve being put out of the fellowship. It's something that they didn't do. Circumcision. Okay. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I was stood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. He didn't fear God, he started fearing man. And when you start fearing man over fearing God, you start making mistakes. Peter did. And were come, let's see, and the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. This is Barnabas that goes with Paul and preaches to the Gentiles the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is Barnabas that's been, that they're fighting the Jews everywhere they go. You read the letters of Paul to the Corinthians, to the Ephesians, to Galatians, okay, Colossians. All these churches, they have Jews coming in trying to mess them up, and, and part of this is with them trying to get them back on the right path, saying it's not about the law, it's not about the law. And then Barnabas goes and gets falls back into the trap of acting like it's about the law. It's about circumcision. Verse 10, But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I keep pointing this out because you have that person that's so worldly out there, that's trying to say, this is just culture, this is culture. No, it's a salvation issue. The truth of the gospel. I said unto Peter before them all, If thou being a Jew, livest after the manner of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compelst thou the Gentiles to live after the Jews? He's got to remind Peter what he said in Acts. Well, we're not supposed to put a yoke of bondage under him that we couldn't even bear. But, but Peter forgot that. Verse 15, we who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. It's talking about salvation. But by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. No works of the law shall be the flesh shall not be justified by the works of the law. If you start falling back under the works of the law to be saved, you're not going to be justified. You're not being a light for Jesus Christ if you go back to being under the law. The law gets all the, the light. The people are seeing the law, they're not seeing Jesus Christ. What is true liberty? Being free from the law of sin and death. And Jesus Christ is what freed us from the law of sin and, dry, uh, sin and death. You have to be in Christ Jesus our Lord to have that liberty. And that liberty is not talking about hell days. It's not talking about what head coverings we're wearing, we're, we're, we, we want to wear. It's not talking about hell days. It's not talking about uh, what we want to eat. Oh, it's just a choice. It's just a, That's not what liberty is. Liberty has to do with salvation. The true plan of salvation. Someone coming in and messing up the true plan of salvation. Taking your eyes off Jesus Christ and what he did for you. That's 
when it comes to spying out your liberty which you have in Christ Jesus. Galatians chapter 2 verse 17. We're going to keep going. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, the old man is dead and buried. We always talk about the old man is crucified with Christ, the new man is raised. How often do we start falling back into old addictions? We start falling back into doing things the way the old man did things. If I build again the things which I destroyed, I threw myself at the foot of the cross. The old man is thrown at the foot of the cross. The old man is dead and buried with Jesus Christ. I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. Okay. He's talking about for him, though, personally for him. For us, I'm a Gentile. But he's talking about for a Jew. A Jew gets saved and born again. That old man gets thrown at the foot of the cross. The old man that said, hey, I had to keep the laws in order to be saved. I have to keep circumcision and the laws of Moses and the, the holy days. and what I have to do all this. I have to stay. In, you know, I can't know that I'm saved. I have to work for my salvation. It's a stumbling block. That man has to be crucified with Christ. And the new man that's raised up, it's faith in Jesus Christ. That's all. It's Jesus Christ that saves, not the law. Not the keeping of the law. Verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Christ is in me, and I am in Christ Jesus. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The good works that follow salvation is not done because you're earning salvation. It's done because you're living for Jesus Christ. You are in Christ Jesus and you're living for Him. That's your heartfelt desire. I do not frustrate the grace of God. How do you frustrate the grace of God? Remember what Paul said. I already said this before earlier, but are we to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How are we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You have some people that frustrate the grace of God by trying to make you earn salvation. They mess up true gospel. You have people that frustrate the uh, grace of God who try to make it out where sin's not a big deal anymore. Now as a saved sinner, it's not a big deal. You can sin all you want. Ah, who cares? God will forgive you. It's under the blood. It's, a, it's on the cross. It's under the blood. What is that? It's frustrating the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. True salvation can only be found in Christ Jesus our Lord. Are you in Christ Jesus our Lord, brother says Christ? Are you? If you are, you have liberty. And that liberty is being freed from the law of sin and death. As a saved sinner, you can sin and still go to heaven. We ourselves also are found sinners. Paul's saying, I'm still a sinner. I'm a saved sinner. But I'm not going to go back under the cross. I'm not going to try to resurrect the old man. Because remember, Paul, before he got saved, was all about the law. He persecuted the church. He attacked Jesus Christ. He was all about the Levitical laws. Okay. Galatians 15, or Galatians 5, yeah, 15. Galatians 5, 13. We're going to transition here from part 2 to part 3. Part 2 is all about what is in Christ Jesus. True biblical salvation, and someone comes and tries to add to it, subtract from it. They try to mess up the true gospel and get you to doubt your salvation, get you to promote a false gospel to the world so people can't get saved. Okay, True liberty can only be found in Christ Jesus our Lord. When you have someone who gets called out for his sins, we're going to get into this transition here, gets called out for his sins, and they try to claim liberty, claim liberty. This is who we're going to be talking about next. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Notice what he said. We ourselves are also found sinners. We're going to get into this to find out what is he talking about. Because some people say, well, no, it just means that you just don't abuse your liberty, which means, you know... It's just choices that, you know, you don't let something that's not sinful uh, 
become to the point where it's ruling you. You know, too much of one thing can become sin, that kind of thing. No, it's talking about actual sin. You're not supposed to take sin like pagan holidays, uh, Hollywood movies, TV shows, video games, uh, drunkenness, fornication, uh, cussing, whatever it is. You're not supposed to take sin and say, well, you know, God will forgive me. You're not supposed to abuse that liberty. Yes, can you sin as a saved sinner and still go to heaven? Paul did. I am. I, I, I'm still a sinner. I'm not justifying my sin. I'm a safe sinner, and I'm still going to go to heaven. But what does it mean to use liberty as an occasion for the flesh? We're going to get into that in the, in the third part. So the second part, looking for Jesus Christ, you need to make sure you stand, brothers and Christ, stand, stand, stand for the true plan of salvation, the true gospel. Don't fall to the left, don't fall to the right. Don't give in to the, oh, i got to go to a Babel building. Don't give in to, i got to do this, i got to do that. Don't give in to Catholicism. If you don't believe the Trinity, you're lost. Okay, Trinity is pagan. Okay, um, if you don't keep the Eucharist, it's Catholicism, paganism. The Godhead of the King James Bible is truth. Trinity is pagan. Um, the Eucharist, I'm trying to think of things for today. You have to go to a Babel building in order to be saved or this, or that, all this garbage. Be careful to not fall into it. Keep our eyes on Jesus Christ and keep fighting, fighting, fighting for the true plan of salvation in your life that you live, brother says, not just with your words, in the life that you live. Okay? So we're going to get into this. The part three is going to be about what does it mean to use liberty as an occasion for the flesh. It's pretty simple. It's pretty easy. We're going to get into it. People are going to try to confuse you. Don't let them. So I will see you in part three of this series of studies of liberty.